Hey man, think we should join the Space Rangers? Mercenaries and warriors who fight to keep the universe safe from the scum and villainy of pirates and the robot armies of the Dominators. You know what? I think we should. We'll get a little spaceship, maybe a few ship weapons and some resources to get started and we'll be given permission to put boot to ass for the greater good of the whole universe. Hmm, okay that sounded great but it looks like we were actually given a little tiny speck of a ship. Maybe we should have joined with the pirates instead. Become a turncoat and start messing with the coalition in their tiny ships with our other fellow pirates? That would have been very much possible in this turn-based space combat and trading RPG which was originally released in 2002 in Russia and then released as the revised and enhanced HD version in 2013. You could also start off as a pure merchant which is what I attempted to do at first. The idea would have been to go from planet to planet finding the cheapest goods and then trying to sell those goods on other planets at a much higher price to get money quickly. That seemed a bit monotonous but I did it briefly to justify my character's name. You wanna buy some death sticks? Yeah they don't look alike too much but I just found it funny that my character leans in as if he wants to sell you something dubious. If I was a trader the best way to make money would have been trading goods that are illegal in most systems. Like literal death sticks. But uh, I don't wanna sell you death sticks. Coming back to the size issue, maybe the reason why the ship looks small is just the way this game's resolutions were originally much lower and this HD version allowed them to be cranked up for sure without actually resizing any fonts or user interface or anything like that. So everything is just looking like a miniature now. But on the plus side we have a much larger viewing range in space. Look at all that space! Also better grab a magnifier because the text probably took the hardest hit with this resolution crunch. Reading the quests is a very central part of this game's content. Even though there's a lot to read, for me it was all worth it. This game is a total mind bender by the way, just as a fair warning. It's hard to see the appeal at first glance. I mean the graphics look peculiar and stiff, everything has a strange quirkiness about it and the text is at times so poorly translated you're not even sure if there was meant to be a joke in there somewhere. But just hang in there, there's a lot more to this game. You might just end up like me and keep playing this game over and over again over the years. First of all this game has technically four different game modes. What you're looking at now is the main mode of the game, comprising of visiting planets, traveling and trading and dogfighting within a solar system, as well as hyperspace traveling between the 70 plus star systems in the game. There are also fully three-dimensional real-time strategy planetary battles where you design and build your own combat robots and take over facilities on the surface of planets. These are pretty difficult to figure out at first. The robots do not move smoothly and control mistakes are harshly punished. Once you get the hang of it and find a robot design that works for you and takes advantage of the resources available to you, it's really satisfying to grab that big payout for winning one of these. It's among the highest sums you can earn in this game as a single payment, plus there's usually added bonus reward items. The third, smaller game mode is this spherical arcade shooter type game which takes place inside black holes. The fighting happens in real time and you use the same weapons in here as you do in space combat, though the effects of the weapons are sometimes massively different. These took a while to start winning as well, but the rewards are definitely worth it as you get some of the rarest, most beneficial parts for your ship here. The last game mode to mention is Text Adventures. Yes, you heard that correctly. You might be thinking, am I crazy or something, recommending a game that has something as basic as text adventures in it? But they're completely optional, and besides that, I'd say they're actually really entertaining, most of them if you take the time to dig into them. These are mostly intellectual and mathematical challenges, spiced with strangely attractive humor and storytelling. Some of them take a very long time to complete as well, and I still remember a lot of these from earlier playthroughs, bringing an instant smile on my face when I realize what's coming up. The biggest reason why the humor and these stories work so well are the five playable races in the game, who inhabit this universe. These colors you see in the solar systems and the names of the planets represent the governing race's color. As a quick introduction, there are the dumb, brutish orc-like warriors called Malogs, who dislike things like intellect and art, and only respect power and size. 
Quite the opposite of Gaulians, graceful, highly advanced and intelligent aliens who only wish the best for everything that is alive and love to study social science above all. There are also the Fey or Feyans, incredibly smart but fragile aliens who have achieved incredible heights in their technological pursuits and are willing to share their technology with other races as long as it helps ensure a prosperous future. To me the funniest race in the game are the Pelling, amphibians who tend to love disorder and chaos as well as breaking the rules and gaining profit from the woes of other poor souls. The other races don't really trust them, but find themselves doing business nonetheless because of the Pelling's problem-solving capabilities and outside-the-box thinking as well as the wealth and resources they've accumulated. They're basically like a huge intergalactic mafia. In the midst of it all are us humans. Since this game takes place over a thousand years in the future, we have of course developed to a level where we are more comparable to the other aliens' capabilities. The more advanced aliens still make fun of us humans though. Like in one mission, the Feyans find heaps of human spying equipment on their planet, but instead of getting mad, they collect them, upgrade them, and now ask you to go deliver them back to the humans to show how to improve their espionage techniques. The space traffic looks very difficult to make sense of at first, but basically there are liner ships carrying a variety of the game's trading items, and then there's pirates preying on them. The only thing saving the traders from certain doom is the military, which keeps the peace in all the coalition-controlled systems. But if you're a trader flying in a pirate-controlled system, unfortunately no one is going to help you. There are also massive flagships, which take a lot of hits and pack a lot of firepower, but move really, really slowly. They are far from invincible, however, especially when the system happens to be overrun by the real threat in the game I mentioned earlier, the Dominators. They basically control one corner of the galaxy, including at least a dozen solar systems, but sometimes they attack solar systems across great distances due to their amazing control over black holes. The player typically starts pretty much as far from the Dominator's central areas as possible, and the galaxy map is opened up gradually over time by purchasing star charts from governments. The Dominators have three leaders, basically three artificial intelligences who keep entire war fleets under their control. Their names are Keller, Blazer and Terran. Keller's mission is to study everything and in his own words the best way to do that is to break it down into as small parts as possible. So that's why his forces are pulverizing all other life forms on contact. Blazer's sole purpose, on the other hand, is eliminating all other competition by having the best war fleet and most advanced strategies. It believes itself superior to all and even attacks the other AI's forces, wishing to take all of the galaxy's resources for itself. The final AI, who also has the hardest to beat forces, is called Terran. His mission is transformation. He wants to change everything and everyone into Terranoids, and he's not afraid to experiment. He even offers you the chance to willingly join the Dominator ranks, which I would assume would have been a completely viable way to play the game. Yeah, become the thing you swore to destroy. I gotta try that sometime. His lust for knowledge is ultimately his weak point too. Along the years you are helping the science department in Dominator related research and the best minds of the coalition figure out new kind of science about how to transform into a new star. If you let Terran in on this secret, you will get an epic scene where he pulls all of his own remaining forces into himself and starts using their energy to slowly turn into a sun. There's multiple ways to get rid of all the AI leaders, but just plain old kicking their artificially intelligent asses works too. Except for Keller, who can just put himself back together over and over again until your science department figures out a way to put a stop to that. Whew, a long-winded explanation about the Dominators and I barely scratched the surface. There's just so much other stuff to talk about as well in this game. In this playthrough, I found the best way to make money for upgrading my ship was to complete courier missions. They are offered by chance by the governments of different planets and basically you have to transport some object from their planet to some other planet in another solar system. If your ship is slow and you have no special help with hyperspace traveling, you can only complete these missions on normal difficulty, but I happened to get this nifty tool near the beginning of the game from one of these black hole arcade fights. 
With it, I could easily hop the entire distance of the courier missions with just one jump, being able to receive more credits for the hard versions of these quests. Finding income quickly is important, because as the years roll by, the Dominators and all the other forces steadily grow stronger as well. You don't want to get left too far behind, or suddenly you'll be unable to win any fights at all. The space combat in the star systems is a finicky form of art. You'll have plenty of time to think things over, because it's all turn-based, but you have to take into consideration everyone's speed, distance, defenses and weapon ranges, as well as weapon types. You can even rig your engine to double speed, to gain a lead or strike weak targets that are separated before they join up with the others, but that burns the engine out really quickly and might cause it to fail. This leaves you plodding along with a laughably bad basic speed, at which point everyone just gangs up on you and you don't stand a chance. The biggest headache for me were missiles and torpedoes, which track you for several turns until they hit you or hit another friendly target in your vicinity. You can also be sneaky and use the star in the center of the solar system as a missile blocker by quickly flying past it. Just be careful, as the closer you get, the more damage the star does to your ship as well. The end game fights can get extremely crazy, and as my number one tip, try to make good use of these things called quark bombs. Drop it into space and shoot it to trigger a massive explosion. Check this out. Kaboom, baby! Yeah, they're only found inside black hole minigames, however, so they're pretty rare. I only found three in total during this entire playthrough that took almost 40 hours. These arcade shooter levels are a good way to make money too, by the way, because you usually find rare, high-level equipment and not much time passes by. You also only get hull damage, which is cheaper to fix than getting damage to all of your equipment and systems, including the radar, shield generator and object gripper. Even after finishing the game and getting my name on the Rangers Hall of Fame, I could have still gone on much further. I hadn't fully taken back control of every system from the Dominators, even though all their leaders were dead, and also the pirates were still running free. But at this point I would have very much been excited to try playing as a pirate instead, so I would have probably started over anyways. This game has earned its place on the top 100 list because it was the most fun I've ever had literally cleaning up an entire universe of bad stuff, or even becoming full villain and seeing how much of it I could conquer for myself. Time for a celebration for finishing this game, let's see what's next on the list.